Hey guys and ladies, welcome to another video. Today we have a family portrait video. And as I've said before, I've kind of run out of my large houses where I've got enough to fill up my entire desk here. And, you know, uh, with one house, we've done the Creeds, the Guerlains, the Rojas, you know, the Amouage. I've done all those houses that um, I have the most bottles of. And so what I'm doing now is I'm kind of aggregating some of the houses that um, uh, I haven't mentioned in a family portrait yet. Uh, so we've got a little bit more content than just a few bottles from, from just one house. And today we're aggregating two of my favorite houses from 40, 30, 20 years ago from the past. They, they put out some heavy hitters in the late 70s, especially the 1980s and then the early 90s. Uh, and the houses are Van Cleef and Arpels and Lagerfeld. So you won't want to miss this video. This is going to show the fragrances from uh, my collection uh, from these houses. So I really hope you enjoy this, uh, this content. But uh, before we hop into it, let's do scent of the day because uh, that has turned into a little bit of a ritual with, uh, with my channel. And scent of the day is uh, Queer Entente from Guerlain. Um, and this is one of the few times that you can mark this down on your sheet if you're keeping track. One of the few times that Rich Mitch and I disagree about a fragrance. Um, he loathes this fragrance. Said it's shite. I, on the other hand, actually really like it. Um, I think it's a great leather fragrance. Uh, it is... It is intense. The name says it all. It is leather intense. And, um, you know, this came out, this is a Terry Vasa release, but probably Delphine Jelk had a big hand in it, although she's not credited as the perfumer on um, Parfumo. This came out in 2019. And what I like about it is the use of florals. The use of florals, especially in the first couple minutes, the opening, uh, it reminds me of the way that some of the high-end Roja leather fragrances use florals. Like, uh, for example, um, Great Britain by Roja uh, is, a, is a take on Queer de Russie by Chanel. It's a Russian leather. And he uses florals beautifully in the opening. Now, that's a $2,000 fragrance. You can't compare. I got this bottle for $110. Uh, they're selling new for $260. Guerlain is kind of out of their mind with prices right now. I don't know if it's worth $260, but if you can get a deal like I did, if you can get it around $110, $125 or less, it's a steal. Because it uses osmanthus, which actually smells like, uh, it's a flower, but it has a like uh, nectarine type smell, right? Apricot type smell. And then there's also ylang ylang with a beautiful leather note. Um, the leather note here is, um, it's it's really front and center and prominent. It's in your face. Um, beautiful leather. You know leather's my favorite note. Uh, well, maybe you don't know if you haven't watched my other videos, but if you've watched my other videos, you know that leather is my favorite note. And for a modern leather to put out something like this, I think this is a great accomplishment from Guerlain. Uh, there's a couple others from this line that I actually really like. Uh, like, for example, there is um, Songe du Bois at de Et, which uh, was reformulated in, or maybe not reformulated, but repackaged and renamed in the Guerlain style. They love doing that, taking a fragrance, discontinuing it, and then repackaging it with a different name. And they put it in this bottle and they called it Bois Mysterio. And now they just discontinued Bois Mysterio. That is probably my favorite from this line. Um, also, Ombre Supreme. I'm sorry, that's that's a lesson demo Uh Ombre Eternal is discontinued, and Queer Entance and Ombre Eternal share some similarities. They're both animalic. Terry Vassar claims that there's real ambergris in these fragrances. The other one from this line that I really like is Ansan's Mythique. That's a beautiful ambergris. Um, in Rose, this smells like there's ambergris in it because there's this salty animalic vibe that hits you, and I think 
the animalic is come. I think the animalics are coming from ambergris, even though ambergris is not listed as a note. Um, there's something animalic that's hiding here that they're not listing as a note because they only list osmanthus and ylang ylang with leather and musk, Virginian cedar, sandalwood, and tobacco. Um, so there's something else going on, whether it's uh, synthetic civet or, you know, something dirty underneath, some castorium, ambergris. There's something going on that makes this dirty, but I like that a lot. I like the dirty you know, mechanical leather type feel. It's, it is very intense, but the florals make it more wearable to me. I don't think this is as unwearable as people make it seem. They're like, oh, it's a beautiful masterpiece, but I can't wear it. I don't get that. I, I totally wear this. Um, I love it. So, Querentance, one of my best recent pickups off of Mercari. I got this for, like I said, 110 bucks. For 100 ml, it was sprayed like once. It's literally full, and uh, you can tell the bottle's well taken care of. It even has the little tassel. Ooh, little tassel. Okay, so that's my scent of the day. Um, so let's go to these two houses. Let's talk about Van Cleef and Arpels first. So Van Cleef and Arpels, excuse me, whilst I hydrate. Van Cleef and Arpels um, uh, consisted of. So this is what the company says. Van Cleef and Arpels consisted of one word, luxury. Uh, all products, designs, materials, and functions are geared towards this goal. And because Van Cleef and Arpels combines this effort with an unusually high level of craftsmanship, the brand today enjoys a very high reputation worldwide. The brand was founded back in 19... I'm sorry. The brand was founded back in 1896, where luxury and style are at home in Paris. Uh, the two company founders, Salomon Arpels and his son-in-law, Alfred Van Cleef, were able to attract attention with extraordinary jewelry, watches, and fragrance creations. They won over their discerning clientele with new techniques in gemstone working, creating entirely new design collections. At the same time, they deliberately opened their boutiques in places where their clientele also liked to stroll. Thus... The death of Salomon Arpels in 1906 led to the opening of the brand's first fine boutique directly opposite the famous Ritz in the follow in the years that followed. Other locations such as Vichy, Nice, and Monte Carlo were added. The high art of jewelry making made some of the most important personalities of the 20th century customers of Van Cleef and Arpels. For example, Elizabeth Taylor, Grace Kelly, Eva Perron, and the Duchess of Windsor enjoyed shopping there. For Queen Nazil of Egypt and the Empress Farah Pahlavi, Van Cleef and Arpels even created the coronation crown in each case. Since 1999, the brand has been under the direction of uh, Campagne Fiancerie Richemont S.A. Okay, long story short, jewelry company founded in the 1890s, and um, they made some fragrances. And... Their shining star moments for me, um, there's still a house that does fragrances, by the way, but all of the ones that I own here, every single one of these is discontinued, unfortunately. Um, and it's a shame because one, uh, one of them is one of my favorite leather fragrances of all time. Like I said, I love leathers. Let's start with that one. This is... Let me show you both bottles that I have. One's a little bit newer, one's a little bit older, but they're both fantastic fragrances. I love this fragrance. I adore this fragrance. It's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I had a very hard time not putting it on the list of my favorite fragrances of all time. It's definitely on my top 10 leathers, which I don't think I've ever done a top 10 leather. I've done a, this is not a top 10 leather, where I showed you my leather collection, or some of my leather collection. Later on, I noticed there's a lot of other fragrances that could be categorized as leather scents that did not make the list. Um, so maybe I'll do a follow-up video to that one day if you guys want. But this is Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme. This is a 100 ml bottle. This is a 50 ml bottle. Look at the differences. You can see immediately, um, you can probably tell immediately which one's older. This one's older, the 50 ml. Um, you can see how the EDT is right here. 
whereas in the new formulation, it's on the bottom. Also, this one actually says Porome. This one just says Van Cleef and Arpels Paris. Um, and the bottom is stamped with some number on the old one. Right. Right. Ah, whatever. Um, whereas the new one has a sticker. Sticker's easier for the camera to pick up. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's talk about this fragrance. Uh, Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme. It came out in 1978, and it um, got discontinued, I think, five or six years ago. Inter Parfums was marketing. They, um, they do a good job with reformulations, as far as I'm concerned. And um, this is a Parfums Van Cleef and Arpels bottle. This is also Parfums Van Cleef and Arpels, but uh, like I said, this one's older, this one's newer. The 100 ml is um, newer. And basically, this is a leather fragrance that uses some of my favorite notes, okay? So it's spicy. They use stuff like um, nutmeg, sage, myrtle, uh, but it, it also has a bit of, it's not all in your face growl. You know, it's not all dirty leather and, and stuff like that. There's also a beautiful side to this fragrance. There's some citruses and lavender in the top. The star of the mid, though, is the rose. There's, art, there's also Artemisia, which was very popular in the late 70s, early 80s fragrances. Dior Jules comes to mind. Uh, beautiful Artemisia in that fragrance. There's Artemisia and Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme. Uh, there's also Old School Carnation, and there's Clove. If you're a Clove lover, this is one to check out. It's not prominent, but it's there. Uh, and then patchouli, but the rose is what's so gorgeous in this fragrance. This, um, and Aramis 900, and um, a fragrance by Azaro called Ace Tour, A-C-T-E-U-R, Ace Tour, um, are, are my top three masculine rose fragrances, if you will. And then, of course, Lyric Man, for modern masculine rose fragrances, you could say. But for vintage, those three, these three take the cake. There's also, um, this is this is basically kind of like um, a Schieffer fragrance, you could say, because there's labdanum and leather and frankincense, sandalwood, musk in the base, um, along with vetiver and cedar. Uh, and so basically what you get is you get this very classy, um, you know, very, you, you, you would probably consider this a winter fragrance. Most people would consider this a winter fragrance, but that rose, you know, that rose that kind of just peeks through and brightens everything up. Nutmeg is a, is a, is a, is a note that brightens things up. Uh, and along with the lavender, you know, um, it's a very versatile scent in my opinion. This would be a perfect signature scent for somebody like me. If I had a signature scent, I don't. As you can see, I wear something different every single day. Um, but if I, you know, picked out some of my favorites that I wanted to keep coming back to, this would definitely be on the list. It is an absolute banger. It's a shame it's discontinued. Shame on you, Van Cleef and Arpels, for discontinuing this. Um, it is, um, I'm so glad to have two bottles, though. This is sort of full, and this is basically full. Uh, Anoush found me this little old bad boy here. Thank you, Anoush. Um, love this fragrance. Um, so that is the first one. The second one that Van Cleef and Arpels is known for is a fragrance called Sar. Now, this is most people's fa favorite. My favorite is Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme. Most people love Sar. Sar is a little easier to wear, in my opinion. Uh, it, it smells like the bottle. It's green. It's oak moss. Came out in 89. So... 11 years after Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme, they released their second masculine scent. And uh, this basically has Artemisia, Bergamot, Coriander, Lavender. Again, there's Lavender here. There's Narrowly and Rosemary with Tarragon, Geranium, Jasmine, Lily of the Valley, Carnation, Pepper, Pine, Rose, and Juniper. And then Amber, Oak Moss, Coconut. Coconut probably means maybe a bit of Castorium. Uh, leather, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, vetiver, and cedar. So this is maybe more traditionally chifra, which I tend to love chifras. This is maybe traditionally a little bit more fougere leaning. 
Um, but what you get is you just get this giant green oak moss bomb. And um, this is a tester, as you can see from the back. This is a vintage tester that I bought from Le Parfumé back before they jacked their prices up. And um, you can see the short ingredient list down there. So I think there's an older version of this as well, as well because Ad Adipair Limited, uh, A D I P A R Adipar Limited, is I think the is I think the first reformulation um, after um, um, Parfums Van Cleef and Arpels. But still, this is a very good um, version. Anytime you see a short note listing like this, you know you're getting an older bottle and. Um, this is one that I actually prefer wearing in the hotter weather. I will wear this in spring and summer. Even though it's an oak moss bomb, it's a fougere to me. There's nothing that would put people off. Here, there's castorium. Here, even though there says there's castorium, I don't get it like I do with Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme. So usually I'd reserve this for winter. This I wear in the spring and summer. But then... Van Cleef and Arpels released a flanker to Czar nine years later. So that was 89. This is 1998. And this is called Eau du Sar. Eau du Sar by Van Cleef and Arpels Paris. And um, there's your little fancy crest right there. Um, and I don't know if the camera will pick that up. That's another hard one for the camera to see. That's as close as you're going to get. I think Adipair is also the um, distributor here. Also discontinued. Um, and it's basically a fresh take on SAR that uses popular fragrance sense, popular fragrance ingredients of the 90s. So if you remember, I did a video um, on Pierre Bourdon recently. If you're big into learning about the perfumers behind these fragrances, go watch my uh, perfumers portfolio video on Pierre Bourdon. You'll see some of the notes that he started to use in the 90s, like uh, melon was a big one. This has uh, pineapple, which was also a big Pierre Bourdon note use until one of his students used pineapple in Aventus and it blew up. And um, um, Jean-Christophe Harreau, created Aventus, and uh, he was a, a, a disciple of Pierre Bourdon, basically. Pierre Bourdon was his teacher. Um, so here you get melon, you get pineapple, you get grapefruit and cardamom and caraway and patchouli and sandalwood and vetiver and lavender. It's very fresh. It's very clean. Um, if I smelled this, would I make any connection to Sar? No. Probably not. I would just think it's a standalone fragrance, a, a summery, citrusy, standalone fragrance. Um, but it is very nice. It's done in the old school way. I like the old school citrus fragrance. I'd rather wear this than a modern blue fragrance. Let's put it that way. Modern blue fragrances to me are boring. This is at least not boring, but if you want something season appropriate, if you're someone that likes to wear, you know, uh, clean, easy to wear scents in the summer, and you like to wear heavier scents in the winter, um, you know, you can kind of do the seasonal thing with something like Eau Dazar. Uh, glad to have it. Would I buy another bottle if this runs out? No, probably not. This is a one, this is a one and done thing for me. Uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's going to get a lot of use, especially with me being in Texas. Um, by the way, I did not want to give the impression Pierre Bourdon was the perfumer here. I was not saying that. The perfumer is Benoit La Pausa. Uh, he made Eau du Zar. Um, but I was just saying that a lot of popular notes that I think Pierre Bourdon um, kind of really revolutionized and started, revolutionized, uh, really started using uh, at that time that became very popular you find in this fragrance. So you have to kind of like, it's not really aquatic, but it's very fruity and citrusy and clean and popular modern masculine of the 90s, let's say. Okay, now we're going to jump to the newest fragrance from this house that I have in my collection. Absolute travesty that this is discontinued. Um, this is Midnight in Paris. Look at the bottle. It's a travesty this is discontinued. Um... It almost looks like a jewel, you know, something that 
a jewelry maker would make, and they were jewelry makers, Van Cleef and Arpels. Uh, one of the most beautiful bottles in fra and fragrance community. Um, Inter Parfums made this one. And um, so this basically was created by Olivier Polge, who is a master perfumer, but it's a designer, okay? This used to sell for 30 bucks. It was a cheapie. Now, two, three hundred dollars if you're lucky for a 100 ml bottle like this. Uh, and it came out in 2010. It's discontinued, of course. There's also an EDP version. This is the EDT, but they're very similar. The EDP is just a slight bit heavier. Um, but this is basically bergamot, rosemary, and lemon. And the lemon is pretty prominent in the opening, uh, as is the bergamot. And then you get this, um, lily of the valley with mate tea. So it's, tea notes are very calming to me. You know, it's a very just chill out, you know, wear it sitting around your condo or your house or lounging around with friends. This is a very easy to wear fragrance. Uh, there is a leather note in here, but it's a modern leather. This is the kind of leather that I love. This is my kind of leather, old school, you know, using castorium and labdanum to create that leather accord. This, is, this isn't that. This is modern, designer, you know, probably not gonna offend anyone. I think I just got some on my hands. Um, it's leaking. I'm gonna smell like um, I'm gonna smell like um, Van Cleef and Arpels Midnight in Paris. What's happening? Um. Anyways, uh, it is, and then in the base you get Tonka, Frankincense, and Amber. So think about it's all over my hand. It is all over my hand. And you know, one thing about these bottles that sucks is that it's very common. For the top to come off so as you can see it'll still spray but uh i don't think i should have turned it upside down because a bunch just flew out at me okay so anyways um great fragrance shame it was discontinued steel at 30 bucks probably still a good deal at 100 is it a good deal at 200 300 no don't pay big money for this it's not worth it um it's, it's, it's a designer, a very well-made designer. 12 years ago, this came out. And, you know, I, I feel like you used to get designers like this back then. And Olivier Polge. I mean, you can't get much better as a perfumer from, from Olivier Polge. And now I have Midnight in Paris all over my hand. I have Queer and Tons on top and Midnight in Paris on my palms. Beautiful mixture. Okay. So that sums up the house of Van Cleef and Arpels. Now let's jump to the house of Lagerfeld. Um, I want to read you a little bit about Karl Lagerfeld because he is a very important um, person in the, in the fragrance community and in the fashion community. So he was born in Germany um, and he um, is a very elusive figure. So it was believed he was born in the 30s. He got his career started in the 50s, uh, and he basically won some sort of an apprenticeship award by uh, Pierre Ballman, uh, and he moved on to um, Jean Patou, the house of Jean Patou, which is one of my favorite old school houses. Uh, Jean Carlio was the in-house perfumer forever and ever and ever of Jean Patou, and he is one of my favorite perfumers. Um, he stayed there three years, uh, or five years, I'm sorry, and uh, he designed basically uh, different collections there. And um, he had very controversial designs, if you will. Very no low necklines, um, low backs, short skirts. Um, you know, critics didn't really care for him. Nonetheless, it kind of put him on the map, if you will, right? And uh, he decided to start freelancing for himself. Uh, and he designed different things for... Uh, Tiziana, Chloe, Curial, Fendi, so forth and so on. And then in 83, he took over the creative director uh, of Chanel. And that's where his career really blossomed. And he basically stayed the creative director of Chanel until he couldn't work anymore and died. Um, but during that time, he created his own line uh, and of, of, of clothes. 
and of fragrances. Uh, so I think he created his own line of clothes in 84, but his first fragrance actually was released in 1978 for men. And that fragrance is none other than this. What is now called Lagerfeld Classic, but the one that you want is called Lagerfeld Cologne. Take a look at the difference in the script. Can you see that? Lagerfeld Cologne Spray. And so this is, this is the new version. It's called Lagerfeld Classic. Still a great fragrance, but look at the difference in the script. This is the one that you want. Um, and basically the difference between the two is this is like Lagerfeld Classic with all the teeth taken out, all the masculine fragrance part taken out. The part that I love, the heavy oak moss, the dirtiness, uh, the stuff that used to make masculine fragrances masculine in the 70s and 80s. This is a modern uh, fragrance now. You can wear this any place, any time. It's still powdery. It's still nice. It's orangey. It's powdery. It's um, It basically has notes of um, beautiful aldehydes in the top. You'll see a bit of a theme with him. He loved using aldehydes in the top of his fragrances. And um, he was big into Orientals. Um, this bottle is made by Inter Parfums. I think Coty makes this fragrance now, and I think the Coty version is crap. Um, it's not crap, it's just not as good. Inter Parfums does better reformulations to my nose, and they did a decent job with this, with what they could do. They couldn't use the, look at the difference in the color of the juice. You know, I've talked about this before on my channel, but, um, that's, this is a great example of why I love vintage fragrances. Look at the difference. This is sickly orange, food coloring. You know, this is normal, um, darker. And that's what you get. You get a darker. It's almost like they took uh, this fragrance. This, this classic fragrance here. Let me keep it on the same side for you guys. It's almost like they took you know, the, the new fragrance, which has pieces of it in here, and just added a vintage masculine on, on top of it and just like blended them together. And then you get Lagerfeld Cologne, the original. It's so good. It's so comforting. It is powdery. You know, if you're somebody who doesn't like Abbey Rouge because it's too powdery, you might have a hard time understanding this. But trust me, um, wear it. Let it let it mix with your body chemistry. You you will fall in love with this fragrance. It is, especially the Lagerfeld Cologne version, and it doesn't matter which one you get. You can get the Bethco version. Mine's Bethco. Or you can get the Parfums Lagerfeld before Bethco started distributing. Either way, as long as it has this font and says Lagerfeld Cologne, you are safe. And it, it, it also has this tobacco uh, note. And the tobacco in the vintage is so beautiful. It's really toned down in the new one. Uh, the new one is all about tonka, vanilla, um, you know, sweet stuff. It's sweeter. You don't get the dirtiness. You just get this clean. You could, you could say you could wear this and if this was your signature scent, you could wear this in summer and this more in uh, winter and fall and stuff like that. But I would just wear this all the time because I love this fragrance so much. Um, the biggest note, though, is the orris root. Orris gives this powderiness, this, you know, um, imagine if you took some citruses and just, like, powdered them up, and, you know, you powdered up, you took a lemon and powdered it up with, you know, makeup powder, and every time you threw the lemon on the desk, powder puffed up, um, and then you added patchouli, and you added tobacco, in real oak moss. That's what you get from this fragrance. It's so good. Uh, it's so, so good. And uh, really put Lagerfeld on the map. This is what Al Pacino wore when he had to get into um, character to do Scarface. This was this is what mentally got him in, in the mood. He would just douse himself with this stuff. Uh, I bet he smelled amazing. And um, I actually bought a backup bottle. This is what the box looks like by the way, of the vintage. This is what the box looks like. Parfums Lagerfeld. Um, 
You can't see what's on the bottom. Oh, it's all on the back. There's nothing on the bottom, that's why. This is a 60 ml splash, and I scored it for like 40 bucks on Mercari. I couldn't say no. Um, and so that's the inside of the old boxes. And then there she is. A 60 ml splash. Vintage. Bethco. Um, I love this fragrance. I absolutely... So good. Um, okay, so that is the first one. And the one that really put uh, Lagerfeld on the map. Um, and definitely if you're a fragrance collector like me, if you love old school stuff, you have to get your nose on that one. Then, um, a couple years later, fast forwarding to the 80s, 1986, so eight years later, they released this. Look at the juice color. It almost looks the same, but it's not the same fragrance. It's different, but it has that same DNA. It's an oriental, um, it's a spicy oriental. Look at the cap. Look at that old school, almost like a whiskey glass from old, right? KL Om is what this one's called. And this is a Parfums International release. So uh, Parfums International, I think, came after Bethco. So Bethco owned the distribution rights after Parfums Lagerfeld. And then it became uh, Parfums International. And then Unilever owned the rights of uh, Lagerfeld fragrances. Uh, and then Inter Parfums and then Coty. I think that's the way it worked. Um, but this um, adds a couple elements to it which make it so interesting and so delicious for cold weather. They've added rosewood, which remember I said... Uh, something about Abbey Rouge. If you like Abbey Rouge, it's a little bit powdery. Um, you know, you have to you have to like somewhat powdery fragrances. This adds almost like this rosewood element from Abbey Rouge. Abbey Rouge has a rosewood, and so does this. But it keeps the orange, and um, it keeps the benzoin and the vanilla, and it adds civet. It makes it dirtier. And they've added rose here, okay? So they've added rose, they've added cinnamon, um, they kept the patchouli, they've added geranium, jasmine, and carnation. Oh, I love this fragrance. It's so good. These two are just absolutely amazing. Um, you know, 80s, 70s. Uh, and... It's, it's, you have to like Orientals. It has that, it obviously has that DNA. It is still powdery. Um, even though Oris isn't listed, I think there's an Oris aura, if you will. Um, the Civet isn't so dirty that you can't wear it, though. It's not like Koros. It just gives it that 80s growl, you know, that, that distinction that you're smelling something, you know, you're smelling something sophisticated, right? You have great taste if you're wearing this. Um, nobody off the street is just going to be wearing this. Uh, you you hunted this down. You chose this. You did the research. You know you um, you took the steps and the time and all that stuff. And that's that's what this fragrance is about. It's amazing. It really is amazing. Um, so happy to have a bottle. Prices are going insane on these vintage scents. If you can find them for a good deal, like with this one, I found it for 40 bucks, free shipping. I had to grab it, 60 ml, uh, a backup for my Lagerfeld Classic, even though it's a splash, so what, I'll decant it. When you see a good deal, you just grab it, and um, because otherwise, the prices on these things are just going insane. I love the bottle. I absolutely love that bottle. Um, there's something boozy about it as well. Uh, even though there's no booze note listed, it gives off this, you know, almost like this orange liqueur vibe. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, okay, now the final fragrance in this list, and it's one that got talked about yesterday because we did our 1990, uh, excuse me, we did our 1990 video yesterday, and this came out in 1990. This is Photo. 
Uh, and you talk about prices going insane. The prices on Lagerfeld Photo are bonkers. $250, $350, $400 a bottle. Um, this is a Unilever. Uh, probably the least desirable, desirable of the bunch. But I have the vintage fragrances here. This is the original. Parfums International. You can see the difference in the script, right? Look at the difference in the script between the two. Uh, this is the older one. I'm going to do a comparison video for you guys one day once it warms up a little bit. Once spring really takes hold, I'm going to wear this. Uh, I also have an aftershave that Anuj sent me with one of my large orders. Uh, photo aftershave, and it smells divine. I'll shave that day and wear the aftershave and wear the fragrance. Look at the aftershave um, top. It looks like the you know, the, the top of a camera, um, you know, the old school cameras that, uh, you used to, there you go, keeps focusing and unfocusing, that you used to, um, hold, you know, turn to focus, it has that, it has that texture, gorgeous presentation, I love the time they used to spend on these old fragrances, This is the most aldehydic of the bunch. Remember I said a Lagerfeld Classic uh, and Cologne, the original, uses aldehydes. This uses the most aldehydes um, of, of any, the um, Photo. Photo is the most aldehydic of the bunch. And um, it also has beautiful citruses. There is... Um, there's galbanum, so it's a little bit green. There's lavender. Lavender's a big part of the scent. Uh, there's also honey, which I love. I think honey is the secret ingredient. Because most honey scents, you think boss number one. This is like a fresh honey. This is like a fresh aldehydic citrus with rose, jasmine, cyclamen. It's a little bit floral. Remember, 1990, things were really starting to change. Uh, Balenciaga Poron came out in 1990. Uh, and this was right at the forefront. This is Chris from Scentland's favorite scent, and that really goes to say something. Um, there's oak moss, of course, in the base. There's benzoin, sandalwood, cedar, patchouli, tonka, musk, gayak wood. So you have the trifecta of woods. You have gayak wood, sandalwood, and cedar, but you don't get that until the dry down. What you get in the opening is this real aldehydic, clean lavender then it kind of transitions into the floral honey then it transitions into the woody base gorgeous fragrance i wear this in spring and summer um this is a little 60 ml bottle you can see i put somewhat of a dent in it you can you can just spray this and go to town you won't offend anyone with this scent um <clears throat> supposedly big compliment getter i don't care about that uh, but, um, I, I, I do love, I love the fragrance. I wish I had the EDT with this version, this, this writing on it. You know, I wish I had an EDT version of this in a big, in a big 120 ml bottle because the prices are insane. It's so good. Um, I'll wear this, I'll wear this soon and do a comparison video for you guys. So that is my... Um, Van Cleef and Arpels and Lagerfeld, Frank, uh, uh, what am I calling it? Uh, family portrait videos. So, um, let me know what you think. If there's others from these houses that I should try, do let me know. And, um, I'll continue to do these family portraits and cover my whole collection eventually. Cause it's an easy way for me to talk about a lot of different fragrances in a, in a somewhat unique kind of way, you know, segregating it by houses, segregating it by year, segregating it by perfumer. It's a, it's an easy way to, you know, talk about a bunch of fragrances and make you guys aware of them. And that's my point. I'm not doing this to become YouTube famous. I'm not doing this for money. Um, you know, I'm not doing it to become rich or anything like that. And I definitely don't want free bottles from the brands because all of these bottles I purchased with my own money. I'm doing this simply to share the love and passion of fragrances that I have with you guys. I hope you like it. If you do uh, like it, 
and you leave me a like on the video. I greatly appreciate it. I won't ask you uh, because I hate people who first thing in the video say, drop a like and subscribe and all that crap. Like, you know, if I like, if I like what you say, I'll subscribe and like, trust me. Um, but if you do leave a like and subscribe, it is greatly appreciated. And I especially love seeing your comments in the, um, in the video down below. That's the, that's the most important thing to me because I like the interaction with you guys and I've learned so much over these last three months or so of me doing this. Um, I've learned more from you guys than you have from me. So, uh, please leave me a comment, tell me your thoughts, and, uh, I will see you again tomorrow with another fragrance video. Cheers. Bye-bye.